called the Pearl of the Indian Ocean, revered as the Tear of India. This is Ceylon, also known as Sri Lanka. And I'm here to explore the country in all of its wild, untamed beauty. Like countless explorers before me, this is my chance. I've come at the end of the dry season, as the monsoon winds are getting stronger and powerful waves bash the shore. I'm heading into one of the last strongholds of one of the mightiest predators on this continent. This, this is an Indian star tortoise. It is the only terrestrial land species of tortoises here in Sri Lanka. Wow, and it's gorgeous. You can see why it's called the star tortoise, because of these beautiful markings on the back. Here in Sri Lanka, the largest specimen of these tortoises was actually found. It had a carapace of 45 centimeters, and it weighed 14 kilos. They're really impressive. You can see just here, it has an injury. And probably what happened was, they could have either fallen from cliff like this it probably slid down or maybe even an eagle took it up it struggled and actually freed itself from a small height and fell down and it could have cracked a carapace but it's a very old injury though you can see it healed properly and now it's it's tough shell again they're threatened by the pet trade and the populations decreased dramatically now they're slowly recovering but still they're very rare, even here in Sri Lanka, close to the National Park. Maybe now they'll realize that we're not a threat anymore, so they'll have to move off if I just hide behind the bushes. Oh, not falling off. The tortoise came here because of water. Even being perfectly adapted to this environment, it must still occasionally drink. Most animals now are seeking this precious resource. During a forest fire, many animal species actually take shelter inside their burrows. They are very, very important animals for the whole ecosystem. However, it is what comes to the waterhole next that takes me completely by surprise. A local stray dog spots the newcomer first, but I am not far behind. I want to examine this reptile up close, but that would be difficult if he spooks. So instead, I decide to try and handle him. This is not what I had in mind for a first introduction. Whew, that was too close for comfort. Any photography now out of the question, I decide to put him down and just aiming for the head. I can't see. I can't see. My first land monitor. Jeez, they're strong. around he'll bite me he'll bite me on the face ah I need to get him off ah no not down there ah okay you can see their claws are so sharp they're designed to scaling up rocks like this and up the trees they're really big claws look at this they're like a flipping velociraptor ah oh, look at that see the eyes around pupil because they're diurnal, they're active during the day like this. They go out hunting for snakes, mice, rabbits, anything. You name it, these guys eat it. They're powerful predators. They're really the apex predators here. Like most reptiles, Bengal monitors are active hunters. But these lizards are also scavengers. 
They are often seen around carcasses and digging up dead fish from when the lakes have evaporated in the dry season. Yala National Park is a safe haven for these, as they are not hunted here. Poachers are deterred by a collaboration of biologists and park rangers that survey the whole area. The only other animal that could potentially get these guys are eagles, things like that, because they're clever. They get these guys, they take them up into the sky, and then they drop them. And when they land, they're dead. If I wasn't wearing these gloves, and the man I would have it, I'd be completely lacerated all over. Oh look, it's gonna bite me. You can see the tongue very clearly now. Like all lizards, they have a Jacobson's open on the top, and that's how they smell. You see, that's the tongue. Another thing to point out, the difference between lizards and snakes is the ear. And these guys, they have a very big ear. Just behind the eye there, in front of the eye you can see the nostril, then the eye itself, which they can close, again, unlike snakes, and then the ear behind the eye is here, and they have an actual eardrum inside. See, so they, they have very good sight, smell, and hearing. That's what makes them the ideal predators around here. This is probably the most dangerous part, apart from catching. I hope you don't turn on me. And he's on. Man, the land monitor! That is excellent. I'd never believe I would catch one of these guys. Those claws and teeth remind me of the animal I'm looking for. But right now, I'm drawn towards the water, just as all the animals. We'll continue going after exploring the lagoon on our way. Over the summer months, the land here dries out and the lakes become few and far between. During these desperate times, the animals must do everything they can to stay alive and keep cool. Everything from deer to even bears rely on the water. But, there is a scarier presence here. A leopard is always watching. Just saw a snake dash into one of these crevices here. So I think I'll go around and check it out. Oh wow, bat! There's a whole tunnel system here. And the bats are just flying around. They have all these exits and entrances all these tunnels in the rock. Oh, I can already smell a bit of ammonia as well. Oh, I'm on a bat excrement. There's another bat. Oh, they're roosting up there. I can see them. Oh, I can just see them. Look at all the bat activity here. And they're just hanging on the roof there, all around here. Oh, wow. These are insectivorous bats. So they're not a threat to humans at all. They go out at night time to hunt for insects around the whole jungle. They fly around, they snatch them from the air. I think I'll move out of the cave now to let them settle down again. And well, they'll probably be out of here in the evening. Go hunting. Look at this. So cool. Okay, let's go. Later that day, I come back to the lagoon and find a big saltwater crocodile just sleeping there on the edge. It may seem crazy to be coming so close, but I know my way around crocodiles and what a nice close-up picture. Definitely not something to try at home. Got him. You have to be quite careful here with the cacti, all the Apuntia plants. But now, it's late in the evening, I'm coming back to my base camp from an, a long day. It was a good day, but now yeah, I just need to find where our camp is, settle down for the night. Next morning, I set out along the beach. 
It is hard going on the dunes, but I must continue and push on. I cannot wait to find my leopard. first time and I've already heard some jungle fowl calling many other bird species here. Now we're trying to find paths among all these trees, all these acacia trees are very prickly, so it's very hard. We're going to find a path that snakes inland and go along it. Hear that? Langors, um, also known as the uh, Hanuman monkeys, as to the famous god. Oh yeah, there, there. They're up on the tree. See there's a whole group of them. There's one sitting just there behind. I'm not sure if you can see him. These are grey langors. They're very useful, very social monkeys as well. They have big roots, led by an alpha male. They're very skittish though. They're scared of easily in the jungle. This is how I work best. On my own in the bush. And there's a lot of wildlife here, waiting to be discovered. Yala has the highest density of leopards in the world. Yet I've been searching on foot for days, and it seems wherever I go, I just cannot keep pace with one. It was time to call in the cavalry. See in the water hole over there. There's a massive buffalo. Look at that. They're really big, powerful animals. With big horns. Even the leopards probably wouldn't dare attack that guy out in the day like this. If we were out of the car, probably on foot around here, could attack us if it feels threatened, especially in the water hole like this, where it has no cover, it needs protection. He's looking straight at us as well. He's looking, is it a threat? Is it nothing? You're just sitting cooling down in the mud there in the water. Buffalo also rely on water for food, as they feed by grazing on the few plants that survive. During the day, everyone seeks protection, and it is not until dusk that animals begin to appear. Have a go at this. These are wild boar, and there's a whole family of them, look, coming up from the road. I hear them grunting as well. It's a massive group. Now it's much cooler in the evening, the heat is gone, so they come out onto the road to look for some things to eat. They get together as a group again, because they were hiding most of the day, sleeping probably somewhere in the shadows. Oh, look at that. These are incredible animals. See how they stay together in, in a group for protection. Because at this time, of course, the leopards come out as well. They come out to hunt. And if one of these guys stays on his own in the forest like this, he has no chance. The leopards will creep up on him, jump and knock him over, bite him on the throat and, well, the poor boar is gone. So, as a group like this, they can at least be much more protective and, and also watch each other. If one of them sees any sign of danger, like the guy who's seeing us there, he'll stand guard and um, send an alarm across the group so they know that a leopard is coming. Wow, look, they're just moving off into the forest now. Be a great find, eh? It's the perfect time for animals right now, as the sun is setting. After the evening's activity, most animals are settling down. And as we were preparing for the night, I raced off to some very unusual commotion up the road. A tree. And look, there's a squirrel 
trying to maneuver it off. But look, there's a cobra. By the time backup arrives, we just have to film as everything unfurls. Yeah. I see how well it climbs also. You wouldn't think for such a big snake, it can stay a tree like this. They use the bottom scales of its stomach to drip onto the tree and stay like that. And look, and there's a tiny little squirrel on top of it trying to defend the tree. Look. Between the snake and the jeep, there's such an uproar that even the deer spooked from the bushes. Ooh. The cobra eventually gives up, and everyone returns to what is a magnificent evening. chasing after leopards in the car in the big four-wheel drive caught a few glimpses today but still not exactly what I want so we'll go out again tomorrow see if we can find leopards finally photograph them let's see if we get better luck the next morning I continue my journey and as Yala slowly awakens I reach its heart behind me this is the famous elephant rock formation it's uh, it gets its name from the shape because from one of the sides you can actually see it looks like an elephant this is the place where two iconic predators the sloth bear and the leopard can be found together this is their land but sadly there may be as few as 500 leopards left in all of Sri Lanka each one of them crucial to ensure that these majestic cats do not vanish forever. But right now, I am getting closer. Somewhere just in the forest here, there will be a leopard. Indeed, far among the branches, there is a vague but unmistakable outline. Soon enough, the leopard begins to move, and like a phantom of the shadows, he appears. This is what I've been waiting for. Ferocious predator, they do have a lazy side. Leopards use up to 18 hours a day for sleeping and grooming themselves. But make no mistake, this is a wild animal. It shows no fear of us because it has not been threatened, hurt, or disturbed in any way, allowing me to be so close. It is a privilege to observe nature in this way. Such a wild and dangerous, potentially dangerous animal behaves like a typical cat, just cleaning up his coat. Despite the widest distribution of all big cats, the leopard is one of the most endangered species. By protecting them, we can save their habitat and ensure that every species living here can survive in the future. This is the ultimate protector of Yala and the protector of Sri Lanka. Wow, oh, this is just the 
top off everything that we've seen already in the leopard earlier just today and we finally found a leopard and I think now it's time to move out of Yala and find the gathering of elephants up in the centre of Sri Lanka. That'll be another spectacle. As I make my way back, I can't help but rejoice in how much wildlife there is and how much there is left to see. <laughs> 